Yes, it's another Seth video, Fable, and I actually started the recording for once. But yes, we're watching another Seth video to confuse Fable. No, I don't want to be confused. I'm already confused like 27, 80 times a day. That's, that's not even correct numbers, but okay. Those are totally correct numbers. I'm just going to blink at you and then look away and start the video. But listen, I... I've never told you this, but I totally have made up this calculus, so numbers scare me. Uh, I don't think that's an actual word. Worth of a human life. I can't no, this calcula is this actually fight. an actual thing. You know how, we, um, since me and you basically have dyslexia, uh, number, like, sorry, letters get switched up when we try to read? This calcula is like that, but it's for numbers instead of, uh, letters. That I did not know actually existed. Yeah, but it, it's I an don't... actual thing. But for me, uh... Number, uh, letters don't get, like, rearranged. I just forget how to spell things. Or You're letters. lucky, because letters get uh, switched up in my brain. That's why I have, that's why I sometimes weird, read weird, and sometimes my speech pattern gets confusing. Hmm. Anyway, moving tell forward. You the worth of an elvish life, 62 meat, and 17 leather. <laughs> Did you hear him? Did you say 17 leather? Yes, he said 62 meat and 17 leather is the worth of an elf life. I, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of seems a little too much for an elf. Yeah, they are kind of scrawny. I mean, they're tall, though. Peel them down. Hey, oh, dear God. Seth here. Despite doing this for oh, several my. years, I have never figured out how to use a microphone. And for this, I sincerely apologize. I wish I knew how to use my microphone so that the fuck, the way my setup wouldn't, you couldn't hear my air conditioner, but it's hot here so yeah songs of six is an ambitiously made self style i read that as songs of sex elf city state simulator <laughs> developed for the what word what? no better part of seven years now imagine you start playing the game and naturally you play the tutorial I okay most people do the difference however is that over a hundred hours later i am still on the tutorial. Wait, what? Is the story of I, what is he playing? A Total Warhammer? Akaton, the default starting location for the tutorial, which is named after the developer. Huh. We have no mountains, no natural resources, a sprinkle of trees, a small lake, and generally nothing. We're sandwiched between wow. four neighbors, the city states of Kagan Volunteer. So you're a landlocked. Oh my god, he might be Poland. He's a landlocked nation surrounded by powerful empires. <laughs> and the empires of Starlord. If you didn't know, throughout history, Poland has gotten by many people, unfortunately. If you didn't know in history. As a student of history, I of course do know this. It's an Ulisu. In a word, it's not looking I very good for us. History. In the beginning, you start with a couple dozen citizens and a I banish you, I erase you from people. history. Unfortunately, we are Cretonians. These oh. are peaceful <laughs> vegetarian pigmen with no aspirations beyond slumming in the dirt and farming crops. Uh. For our purposes, they're perfect. And I quickly started an agricultural operation. It's uh, not much, good. but at least we're not starving. Grain has to be processed by a bakery, while fruit and vegetables can be eaten directly. What Great the hell is that? Instead of a fruit farm, I started an orchard. I did this on the promise that it's a slow operation with twice the potential yield. To this oh. day, it has produced no fruit. Because what? by the time the fruit trees mature, I get a worm infestation and have to chop them all down. Citizens typically prefer local... Wow. So that was all worth nothing at all. That's horrifying. Oof, I'm, I'm... What? Oof. <laughs> And yeah. Immigrants, and the only way to increase the local population is by having children at the local nursery. In this okay. game, a year is 16 days, and each four days is a season. A baby becomes a child, and a child becomes eligible for labor at four years of age. Song oh my god. encourages the miracle of childbirth with the economic miracle of child labor. Also, oh my. after my We cannot tell Platty about this. He's going to go on about the mines again. <laughs> oh. You know he will. You will. 
friend accidentally snacked on all the vegetables in the nursery crib, I can confidently tell you infant mortality has no effect on the happiness of your population. What? Your city lives and dies on happiness. If you fail to keep your citizens happy, you'll start a failure cascade that ends in ruin. The simulation what goes down to each individual citizen and measures the average fulfillment of their needs and desires for that particular race. Okay. Race is an interesting topic. Some races don't get along. Some races are predisposed to crime. Some races control what? our educational sector, our labs, and our... Oh, academia. great. Here it goes off again. What to do when everyone else hates education? I'm talking about none other than humans. <laughs> humans are troublesome, criminal, and... <laughs> they hate education. Rick Gulf wants in the briefcase. That's for me to know and you to find out. Sanity score of any race, which means an essential component of any healthy human population is an asylum. But they <laughs> love science, which is important because this game handles research in a unique fashion. You don't oh. just learn something. No, you research it and then you have to pass on that generational knowledge across time. Remember. Oh, that actually makes it interesting and also horrifying and makes me think about how much technology we've lost throughout the histories. Uh. Funny enough, the main reason the Renaissance happened, you know how it happened, Fable? How did it happen? You have to thank the Christian monks for keeping records on everything and just having gigantic libraries. Because basically what would happen is someone would go in and find books about these things like, Wow, this is amazing, can I have this? They're like, sure, as long as you bring it back. We don't start with so paper, we get to that. basically, end. like what happened to the, uh, the Library of Alexandria... We lost so much knowledge in there that I'm not sure. We, re we really did. It was a tragedy. It's For multiple generations of yeah. oral tradition. And yeah. even then, we have to maintain and preserve a library. existing knowledge against entropy. Almost every it, race it, dislikes Though I do really entropy. like about that. The whole concept about the library was whenever they got new knowledge, they made sure to copy it while keeping the original, but also giving the copy to the, exactly. original, to the people who got it from. Which is like... They shared knowledge, but they also made sure that you, they kept it, but they also made sure that it went to the rightful owners as well. Yeah. Instead of hoarding it, they wanted to make sure everyone had it, but because of stupidity, we lost so much knowledge. I'm just glad that the Christian monks recorded so much of everything, honestly. Right. Uh, if you, any history nerd should thank the Christian monks. Whether you like them or hate them, you have to thank them for c recording everything prefers to be indoctrinated yeah, this is there's also certain like um certain people back then that didn't really record like certain countries had more of an oral tradition and then we have lost knowledge yeah. they refused to actually keep proper records yes we also have oral traditions in a lot of different well countries originally that were just the problem with oral traditions, especially with, like, stories, is that they change from person to person because some people remember it wrong or some people just change it. Advantageous right. as it fosters loyalty in the absence of happiness. An open mind is an open bussy. Its gates are what? hard and unguarded. Some might argue Gordon that Freeman. are made, not born. In a case of Dondorians, that is literally true because they appear as fully formed adults at the base of the mountain. For this reason, the what? only way to get Dondorians is by immigration. They're good at mining, they're good at Minecraft, they're basically dwarves. The okay, so they're just dwarves. Dwelling elves. They're good with trees and they're good with nature. Okay, that so what elves? They're also known for violating human men for several days before they cannibalize them. Bizarrely, this makes them compatible with what? the cave dwelling Garthimi, who are effectively bug men. What they <laughs> lack in skill, they make up for with raw numbers. And there's nothing bugs enjoy more than plucking limbs from the other races. And while uh, have a mixed population, some races that sounds like don't a bad get here. along with anyone. The Amevia are a coastal dwelling lizard men. They're okay. uniquely xenophobic and incompatible with other races, which is offset by their impressive physique and high level. Lifespan. If okay. You want a true monocultural isolationist experience. Try the lizards. Finally, there are ah uh, the lizard men. Everyone likes the lizard men. Two giant races you can't normally get. The in lore explanation is that their populations have been decimated over the course of several great wars. If you control that a makes region, sense. including a haven, and satisfy their high demands, they can be convinced to join your cause. While they have many differences, they do share a common trait. 
that are fucking gigantic and make for the best shock troops in the entire game. There's a bit of an irony in the sense that uh, they're incredibly rare and almost extinct, and the best thing they're good at is getting even more extinct. The Argonash are spider leviathans with a voracious appetite. They don't care for anything except food, which may sound simple until you realize the logistical nightmare of providing four meals a day to every person on the map. The Cantors may ask for more up front, but they're easier to satisfy. Generally, once I arrested two people at the same time, but only had one core mm. group, one of the two. I just realized I accidentally did something and looked away from the screen because I quite literally am doing. Uh, sorry, I. It's a work thing. I'm sorry. We were looking away from the screen. I just panicked. Give me one second. Yes, I think everyone does hate each other in this game, Calvin. Yeah, the, the, that, that's how people are sometimes no for no reason. Representation. They consider this a complete what? down of my legal system and left in disgust. But at the time, I knew none of this. I was a young blood desperate to turn oh off and expand my settlement. YouTubers are a prime example of making the most amount of money with the least amount of skill and intellect. In a fair society, no. there were people who should be toiling in the coal mines <laughs> and dying of black love. Appropriately, I simulated this by importing Garfini slaves and renaming them to my favorite content creators. What? I God damn it, Seth. <laughs> Invested so much. Wait, what names H is from? I want to see. For our essay on The Witcher. I simulated this by importing Garfield. Mr. Beast. Oh, that didn't age well. Them to my favorite. Pyro cynical. It's no longer ironic. Content creators. I invest. Are surrounded by noise. <laughs> much into this coal mining operation, oh only to God. find out I've spent several in-game years oh for a tar pit with 30% efficiency. Dear it wasn't God. just unprofitable, but because of the size and scale, the cost of maintenance alone sent me into the red. On the other hand, I found out slavery is actually quite well received, as my citizens what? enjoy a slave population so long as it's not their own. My settlement that grew. That honestly sounds about right with medieval society. Another day. Another flashing. The people lived in fear. Arrests had to be. Uh, made. I'll talk about it later. But because I spread myself so thin, I didn't have the resources or manpower to enforce it. And so the public indecency continued until I increased my coverage. And after the prison started filling up, I am forced to make a difficult statement. Mm. The Dorians are sex pests of the five <laughs> indecent exposers. All five have been dwarves. Uh, At this point, I was earning capital by exporting I'm not furniture. Sure what to this think game about doesn't this. have a fixed economy. Trade prices fluctuate and work on the So it has an in-game economy. Basically, if you can make your that sounds frustrating. Encouraged. If you have excess, oh yeah, no, that's not smart. Too, but over trading a commodity can apply yeah. disproportionate pressure on the value, which is minimized by the number of trade partners. So if you want money, you better diversify. But if you don't, yeah. poverty also has its advantages. If this is something that actual countries nowadays still haven't learned that you have to diversify what you export or things could go really bad if our treasury is empty and we're dead broke guess what our diplomatic gifts mean a whole lot more which is important because if our reputation drops to zero with any of the four factions bordering us okay invaded and with a current standing army of zero men I don't fancy my chances, so okay. I would intentionally dip my savings into the red, plead, cry, and defecate in front of my neighbors, and a pathetic display made me an unattractive target for assault. <laughs> so he I just made himself look so pathetic that they don't want to invade. <laughs> Thousands, so I could reliably forget Wait. about it for the next dozen years while enjoying Whoa. the benefits of almost zero taxation on all trade. This gave me a lot of time to experiment mm. and figure out what I'm doing. Firstly, I tried mining gemstone. Subsequently, I failed at <laughs> mining gemstone. Instead, I used the natural fertility of Jacketon and turned it into an opium plantation. What? I still had a lot of Garfini slaves left over and put them to work in fields of poppies and cotton. Oh However, my god. I got overly ambitious and my bugs got a little rowdy. There is no oh, there's situation. A, oh, there's the an uprising. Words can be said. The cotton pickers are having another uprising. Subsequently, oh my god, you don't need to say it like that. Polish the practice. Not on moral grounds, but because they robbed my throne and took oh, us about Seth. everything. Well, well, what all well, you joked about? Dorians, so I tried producing I alcohol know. and opened a tavern. Demand outstripped supply. Access was terrible and supplies were so low that it just made them angrier. So yeah. I tried satisfying food preference instead. Mushrooms, fish, complex uh, proteins. Okay. And I restricted everyone to just eating bread 
and they were happier. Additionally, what? I tried introducing fine dining in the form of restaurants and okay. almost lost the game to a public riot. Oh my <laughs> god, he's starting he start a restaurant that a riot breaks off. <laughs> but each time I did so, a citizen would starve, spiraling into a vicious loop. Their desire for the McMenu was so strong <laughs> that it overrode their survival instinct to eat street food, preferring instead the embrace of death. This <laughs> was not a plague of famine, it was a plague of choice. After <laughs> what the hell? Out Alcohol is haram, cooking is forbidden, and our entire food pyramid is bread. Finally, I did make a breakthrough in citizen satisfaction. It turns out, okay. when I select and look at a random peasant, they are not meant to be caked in shit. And oh, only after building that, I was wondering what was wrong with them. I thought they were injured or something. Hours into the game, did I make that connection? Around <laughs> this time, I also realized, after reading the tooltip, the reason for my insane cost of maintenance. You see, buildings have walls. Walls increase isolation. I did not build any walls. Oh. Do I have to rebuild my entire city? Yes, I did. I rebuilt oh. the whole thing. And I learned to love city uh. planning. Building design is incredibly fun, and there's no greater satisfaction than having an elegantly designed lavatory for optimal shitting, pissing, and sharding. In the end, you take so much Dear pride Lord. in what you've built. Am I coping? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but after numerous... You've been playing for 20 hours, so yeah, you would be coping. Economy ...and a series of shacks resembling civilization. Also, I promoted a four-year-old to become nobility. What? Because it's funny. Nobles <laughs> provide a variety of beneficial effects, and currently... Oh, nobles. Progress, or, you can have the nobles. ...or translated to me, they cannot betray you yet. Everything yet. Everything is calm and peaceful until we found a Cretonian with his eyes scooped out. On the body was a note, signed Jake the Invincible, claiming that he's saving lives by returning them to his forgotten god. Our city Why is that? A serial killer. Uh, I, day, I know that character's name, day. but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, there's a serial Our killer going on. Every victim was a Cretonian, and this was clearly a racially targeted crime. Okay. Terror ruled the streets, and we had no leads. It wasn't until a passerby claimed to see a Cretonian woman fleeing the scene. This information didn't add up, but we Why is that a picture of, of them gadget? Pleaded guilty I don't know. <laughs> to all crimes. The serial killings promptly stopped. Jake the Invincible was identified to be a middle-aged Cretonian woman predating on her own people. We sent oh. the killer into the arena to be chopped into pieces for the spectacle of a crowd. We gave their body as much respect as it deserved. And that we would be... on it and dumped it into a mass grave. Oh, serial wow. killings are rare, and they're not often so straightforward. You might get the wrong guy and torture out a false confession or the trail simply goes cold from lack of evidence eventually oh dear. Yeah, why fields of opium. i just can't believe there's like crime and pu well not really crime and punishment but actual like crimes like that going on in the sea where you're also planning everything and having to deal with kingdoms attacking source of cash i would intentionally reduce my army down to zero to try and entice rebels to attack my city the moment this happens i hire mercenaries crush the invaders and sell off their loot for fat stacks this okay from borderline broke to half a million in the bag now hiring okay. mercenaries is incredibly expensive paying them is even more expensive but they handle their own supplies and they're instantaneous i use them to conquer a neutral region and as i did my brain expanded and my mm. neurons started firing because suddenly i can hire more for oh. each region under my control i get access to five extra mercenary companies so i hatched a plan take all my money raise an army of mercenaries and conquer Winston, here we go the weakest nation i could find nearby so he's literally region. going to create a mercenary army and take over a Same nation token, my numbers increased eventually laying siege to their capital i sold everything to keep those mercenaries paid oh. i almost ran out of money if that siege lasted a day longer than it did i would have lost <laughs> but in the end it was worth it because i reached the max limit of mercenary companies and i could okay. now recruit enough men to overpower anyone oh is, they're asking for 750k up front with a daily fee of 100k soldiers oh. of fortune have a steep asking price but what if the golden Sounds about right. could pay for itself i've been on the back foot of negotiations pleading and groveling to my neighbors for mercy until now selling my spoils i muster a short-lived but massive army declare war intercept their army and immediately sue for peace to which uh -oh. they have no option but to accept my favorable terms <laughs> oh, your god about shotgun diplomacy is you already know the answer 
each time. Because once they surrender, we do it again until we empty their entire treasury. Oh my god. So you're bankrupting the nation through war, basically. Demise. The century of humiliation was over as Jacketon turned on their allies. No longer will I be extorted. Each time it's oh. their nephew's birthday. <laughs> I do think it's funny. They want gifts and money every time it's their nephew's birthday. Luba were too small to resist. The no, I have not gotten Mecha Break, though I want it. The British Empire of Starless to the north was a different story, but led to the development of strategies I'd replicate going forward. Oh, Economic hyperwar is the act of I manipulating the enemy please. to take decisions that are numerically beneficial while destroying them internally. We okay. invade cities, sell them back to the enemy, only to invade them again. Then we use them as bartering chips for other cities, take control of those cities, demolish the walls, and advance our front line. Oh my we god. The need for extended siege and reduce the enemy to a single fight. There was only one exception to this. As luck would have it, the human empire of Ulisu to the south had the largest mm. standing army in the world. Even if I recruited every mercenary, I would still be outnumbered two to one. So, I drained his treasury, and I waited. Eventually, oh. he could no longer afford to maintain his army, and fell like the rest of them. Jackson God damn. Jackson by a simple proverb. Feed the earth, and it will feed you. But we fed the earth so much that nature herself is vomiting up red. There's too many prisoners what? of war oh, dear God. and not enough mass graves to go around. The oh my God. morbid history as I took the rest of the map. Jacketon is now the single state empire of the world. Resources are... You made the Roman Empire. ...is infinite. For we possess an infinite money printer, the design of which is as follows. I form a puppet state, declare war on them, take all their well, money... Well, actually, he would be more close to Carthage because Carthage would actually just pay for mercenaries. Invade them anyway and install a new puppet to repeat the process. I have, mm. in every sense, completely rigged the system. But like Sisyphus reaching the top of a mountain, I had what nothing game left is that? to struggle against. And so too did I lose my interest. So <laughs> I made a royal decree to arrest everyone. What? If you're interested in ending the game, just click prosecute on your main population. Guards start arresting citizens, then they arrest other guards before being arrested themselves. Prison wardens get jailed and break out of their own prison. Chaos what? and pandemonium rule the day as everyone turns on each other and eventually they turn on me. In summary, Songs of Six has a very expansive, detailed, and enjoyable tutorial. At 160 hours of playtime, it play seems time, interesting, honestly. To play the actual game. This can't may not wait to play the actual game. game. Of the year. As we all know, that's reserved for churn vector, but it's a very close second. The graphics, the changing of seasons, the music, the scale of a simulation. Considering this is written in Java, I have no words. There's no huh. other game where the line between written entirely in Java huh. is so blurred. To demonstrate this, for my second playthrough as the Garthimi, I proposed a novel form of meat production. It's less of what a is it? or a pasture, and more of a Tilapi nursery. For reference, oh my god, Seth! Half an apple a day, a fully grown tilapi child costs us 32 apples. But what am I? Uh, that amount in meat and I mean, shouldn't and be surprised, but I am. Rest, execute and butcher them. The tilapi child to tilapi soup pipeline is highly effective. And while my humans don't agree with cannibalism because they're bigoted chuds that can't grasp <laughs> the richness of Garthimi culture, their oh stomachs can't complain. So, what have we learned today? One, Why is there... prisoners are the ultimate cash crop. Labor is a resource, and so are they. Two, look past people and their differences, and see them uh... instead as a source of protein. Three, much like real life, retirement is economically unfeasible and exists only as a and stick to motivate the working class. I give this game my highest recommendation. I give it no days of food out of we're about to starve. And oh, wow. because mainly one guy and not a corporate entity, I can just ask for a sale. If you're interested, that's nice. 20% off on GOG and Steam for the rest of April. The first hundred to use the oh. link win a free chemical castration what, what? or prefrontal lobotomy. Terms and conditions. I would like neither of those things. Always, thank you very much. To come, so stay tuned. A warm also, Fable, are you still there? He yeah, the hasn't spoken. I'll have to poke him with the stick. And bankrolling these videos. I'm if still here. I just. Wonderful. I have just don't know what to say because I'm. More interested in the strange cult of furries, apparently, and and I and I don't know. Seth's humor confuses me, so it like literally just why? I don't know. I was just clicking through to see if there's anything we missed. But yeah, that seems to be mostly the end of the video. And he has a lot of backers. Dear God, I don't think I'll ever get that many. I mean, I'm still. 
I still think it's kind of funny that he literally got, uh, oh, let me call it, got a, uh, what is it called? A sponsor, there you go. He got yeah. a sponsor for that Godhand video just so he could freaking commission a buttload of porn. Like, Seth who is does a, that? Seth is a strange man. He's given way too much power and he has fun with it. At least he's not doing terrible things with it. I will give him that. I guess. He's going goofy stuff with it instead of terrible things. Anyway. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you in the next video. Also, remember, we I have a Patreon, and it only costs $1 to see me react to animes and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, thank you all so much, and I'll see you all later.